Furious Tesla owners are up in arms over Tesla's announcement to allow some of their chargers to accept non-Tesla EVs. Now, Ford and Tesla have announced that that will dramatically grow from next year. All Ford EVs in the US will have a Tesla charger socket and Tesla software on board, meaning they will be able to charge as simply and quickly as we already do, without any adapter or Tesla app. Dave Takes It On can reveal that, on the contrary, it is hugely, massively beneficial. It means a rapid expansion of EV ownership, a dramatic increase in the number and power of Tesla chargers, and as a bonus, the end of Genie Point, Shell Recharge, and many others, disturbingly highly priced charging network providers. Please click the subscribe button if you like this video, would like to see more. We are a young channel and really appreciate your support. Well, Ford is struggling. Although the ice car side of the business is seeing something of a new sales growth at the moment, it knows that by 2030 or 2035, as things stand, new ice sales will cease to exist altogether. The EV side of the business is making a simply staggering loss, equivalent to over $60,000 per car sold. It cannot go on. It's desperate. The public charging network everywhere is also a total disaster. Nowhere near enough chargers, nowhere close to where they're needed, and totally unreliable. Apart from Tesla superchargers. Nowhere near enough of them either, often not where they should be, but easily by far the most powerful, reliable, fastest, best charging network on the planet, which is in the middle of yet another growth spurt. It is the envy of all EV manufacturers, even if they hate to admit it, which they do, and the operating method is the envy of all charger manufacturers and networks. Plug in. That's it. Ford is merely the first to recognise and accept that reinventing the wheel means you just end up with a product that the market leader had a decade earlier and has long since moved on. But Ford has massive brand loyalty. Their customers want to buy Fords. Hence Ford EVs have now copied much of what Tesla went through a decade ago. Dedicated EV factories, dedicated designs, dedicated battery factories, making their own cheaper, safer LFP battery packs. Online sales, eliminating expensive dealerships. That's now all beginning to work. It will take time, but it's now looking good for their future. But it has recognised it can't possibly build an extensive, powerful, reliable, cheap EV charging network <coughs> to match the supercharging network in the foreseeable future. Or any time at all, ever, because Tesla is already doubling it in size by the end of 2024. The gold posts are moving away from them far faster than Ford can catch up. Hence that deal. It will instantly put Ford EV sales well ahead of its competitors in marketing. People already often choose a Tesla EV specifically for access to that network, so in future, those people will have a choice, Tesla or Ford. And that has to terrify Ford's competitors. Ford only has to advertise, we've got you, our loyal customers, the world's best charging network. We care for you. We don't leave you to the mess of public charges out there like, um, <clears throat> well, like some others do. Tesla, by the way, is not afraid of Ford's success. Quite the opposite. More EVs is better for their goal of a rapid transition to renewable energy. Many such people will buy their next Ford car based on brand loyalty and the ability to access their image of the perfect charging network. It's a winning combination. So as the new Ford factories come online, as the battery plants begin production, its EVs will get cheaper and better. Selling direct to public means thousands more profit directly for Ford. With access to the biggest, fastest, most reliable charging network in the world, their loyal customers will have no reason to look elsewhere. That frightens all the other legacy manufacturers. Or at least it will frighten them when they realise and understand what Ford has just done to their industry. They're still stuffing outdated, volatile, expensive, nickel, manganese, cobalt batteries into heavy, outdated ice car body shells and wondering why sales are not taking off. They now have no choice but to follow suit and team up with Tesla superchargers. They will delay, kick and scream, but it's now inevitable that they will also do a deal with Tesla. Tesla superchargers are currently nearly half the price per kilowatt hour in the UK, as the majority of their competitors, such as Genie Point BP Pulse, shall recharge, and much cheaper than all the rest, 
which all offer much less powerful chargers with lower reliability in less than ideal locations, i.e. many of them are on petrol forecourts. When all new EV manufacturers have done a deal with Tesla such that all new EVs will be able to access that vast, extensive network, then Genie Point, BP Pulse and the rest will see their market disappear overnight. The public will simply charge their cars at home if they can and have cheap off-peak rates or at really cheap prices at Tesla superchargers. The competitors will not be able to immediately increase the number and power of their chargers nor drop their prices below that of Tesla and stay in business. They are doomed to failure and they haven't seen it yet. Occasionally in these videos I give good advice that circumstances quickly make out of date or completely wrong. This is one of those. <clears throat> I always said that when supermarket shopping or retail therapy, plug your car into a slow 7 kilowatt charger for free or cheap. Great advice at the time. Now with Tesco and most others having stopped free charging and priced their fast chargers at anything up to 45p per kilowatt hour, why on earth would anyone plug in during the weekly shop just to get 20 or 30 miles of range at a dearer price? If they've got any sense, they won't. My advice now is, if you can't charge at home on a cheap off-peak rate, don't bother buying a home charger or using Podpoint or GeniePoint or Shell or Beat, well, anyone else. Once or maybe twice a week, head to your nearest supercharger and fill up while relaxing with a grand cappuccino and a lemon drizzle muffin. How times change. The end of high-priced, rip-off, substandard, unreliable charging is just around the corner. Good riddance. Thank you, Ford. I'm Dave.